Hello everyone, it's Helen at Journaling Planet and today I'm going to be working in my ekphrastic journal. If you're not sure exactly what that means, do go back to the first video on the ekphrastic journal playlist, which I'll link to below, and explains ekphrasis, what it is, the origins of it and uh, why I'm working with it. But essentially what you need to know today to watch this video is that I am going to be pasting in a picture from this old calendar I was given. I put a little call out on my local upcycling website and asked if anyone had any old calendars. I did this back in December and this piece of ephemera is still sitting in my stash. You know, it's, it's nearly the end of the year again. So this is an example of how great it is to use these ekphrastic journals to use up ephemera that's been sitting around. It's beautiful. You want to use it but for some reason, you just haven't found the right project. Regardless of why you haven't used it, if you've got an ekphrastic journal, it gives you an opportunity to actually put the piece of ephemera somewhere, respond to it in writing, which is what I'm doing now. And something that I haven't mentioned on previous videos is because you've got that piece of ephemera logged somewhere safe, I, it's not just sitting in a drawer somewhere. If at any point you do start a project and you think, gosh, you know, it would have been really helpful to have that picture of the lighthouse that I cut up for that journal for this project. Well, you can just get your journal out, take it to the local stationery store and get it photocopied and you've got another image. So you've got it kept safe and you'll be able to use it again. So that's another reason why I never worry about what I'm pasting into my frastic journal. It's this wonderful, safe place for some of my most treasured pieces of ephemera, like images that I really love and perhaps I'm being a bit too precious about the fact that they're lovely and I'm sort of thinking, well, I've got to find the perfect project for that. Well, that's all well and good, but I've no idea when the perfect project for that is coming along. So that thing could sit in a drawer as this one has for about eight months, nine months, maybe longer, maybe years. And it's just sitting there, not being used, not doing anything creative with it. This is one of the many reasons that I love my ekphrastic journal. I've done something with that piece of paper that I love. This is a picture of the lighthouse that's right near my house and I absolutely adore it. And I've done something with it. It hasn't just been sitting in a drawer. And then if I ever want to use it in a project, I know that it's in my first ekphrastic journal. And all I've got to do is take it to my local photocopying store. I did sort of mention in the very first video that I could use this journal a bit like a hoardy book where you hoard all the pieces of ephemera or images that you love the most and that's how you use them that you have this lovely book to just look through which is something that I've seen other youtubers mention you know if there's a piece of ephemera that you haven't used yet and you've been hoarding it for a long time and I think some of us will have quite a bit of that you can just create a book called a hoardy book where there's just all the things that you you don't want to use in other projects. And that's another place you can go to to take photocopies from. So I think these things are a really good idea. They get your stash out of your drawers or your trays or your boxes, whatever they're sitting in, and they get them into a book. And then as long as you remember which book you put them in. So this one is going to be my Frastic Journal Volume 1. There's no way that I'm not going to a Volume 2 after how much fun I've had with this project. Then as long as I remember it's in Volume 1 of my Frastic Journal and these YouTube videos that I make make it easier for me to remember <laughs> where it is that I put that piece of ephemera, then I can go and photocopy that anytime and I can also look back on it anytime. I know exactly where it is. It's not stuck in a drawer somewhere. I can enjoy that piece of paper. I can enjoy the image. So I do think there's a lot of physical benefit to these ekphrastic journals. And there's also the lovely therapeutic uh, element of the writing where you just use the image as a springboard for a piece of writing. I'm going to read what I've written in this journal for you. Uh, in a minute, because I think sometimes people think, well, exactly how do you use an image as a springboard? How does that work? And I'm used to that kind of thing because I'm actually a writer by trade and I've done countless writing workshops where you would take an image like this and just do a, a kind of springboard activity. So I'm very much used to that and I will share my piece of writing so you can see the kind of thing that I got out of it, but you could take the prompt anywhere. So if you've got some 
pieces of paper in your stash that have been sitting there a long time, do go and have a look through now and maybe pull out one that you really love, but that perhaps you're being a bit precious about that you think I've been waiting for the perfect project, the perfect project hasn't arrived. Maybe think about starting your own ekphrastic journal where you're going to put it in the book and you're going to do a writing response to it, or maybe even start your own hoardy book today where you're going to put it in a book and you know exactly where it is if you want to photocopy it or in some other way scan it and reproduce it. You know, you could scan it and print it. So there's lots of ways of getting these images back in inverted commas if you use them in your journal. Uh, so I recommend doing that today. If you're going to do the ekphrastic activity, then you're taking that image and you are just allowing your pen to go for a wander with that image. What does the image evoke to you? What does it remind you of? What does it suggest to you? What does it call to mind? And just write for as long as it's comfortable. If you've got a really busy day, set a timer for five minutes and only allow yourself to write for five minutes. A lot will come out in that time. And you may even find when you get to the end of the five minutes that you want to keep writing anyway and that you do another two, three, four minutes. It's a really fun activity and often some really interesting things come out of the process. Without further ado, I'm going to read what I wrote in my journal about the lighthouse. And I really hope that it helps you think about your own journaling practice. Maybe some of the ideas will resonate with you as well. Uh, maybe it'll just be interesting and connecting for you to hear someone read their private thoughts to you today. And you will feel a little bit closer as human beings. So here's my journal entry and I'll come back at the end with some closing comments. I first saw this lighthouse in 2012 when I took the train to Sunderland from Thursk to explore the coastline. The second my eyes met with Roker Lighthouse, I said to myself, I don't know when or how, but one day I'm going to live near that lighthouse and it will become my lighthouse. It took eight years to realise that dream, but it was worth the wait. My house is a five minute walk through the Victorian park to the bay in which that lighthouse stands and through the seemingly never ending pandemic lockdowns, through my husband's cancer diagnosis and after his subsequent death, I have found solace in listening to the roaring breath of the ocean in feeling sea spray rush up to my face and watch the lighthouse weather any storm. We have both braved some bitter tempests since I came to live by the seashore, but we are both still standing upright, ready to face the next lightning bolt, overlooking the undulating tides each day. If lighthouses could speak, I'd wager they'd recite one message on repeat that the only thing in this world as certain as death is change. That no matter what dark clouds loom overhead, there will come a day when they must give way to sun. And if we are blessed with the sun today, we can't by rights expect the same tomorrow. I suspect that lighthouse understands better than most the importance of savouring calm, clear days when the horizon is a sharp fixed point anyone may look towards. For like life, the moods of the sea and sky are unpredictable. Nobody asks for a storm, but they will inevitably strike. The trick is to remember that no storm can last forever, no matter how bleak or violent it may be. Stick around long enough and you will see a break in the weather. You don't even have to believe in this to have it happen to you. It is a natural law, much bigger than any one of us. And when you feel at your most hopeless, knowing there is something bigger in governance of the universe than you, even if it is nothing more than natural law, can be a great comfort. I really hope this video has been a great comfort to you and has perhaps inspired you to think about starting your own ekphrastic journal. If you've enjoyed this video or found it useful, I would really appreciate you hitting the subscribe button, maybe giving me a like, leaving a comment, or sharing this video with someone who you think might appreciate it. 
I'll be back with another video soon. In the meantime, take care and happy journaling.